Hello and welcome to our discussion on cost and management accounting. Uh, the focus of this session is process costing. We are going to see the details how the pro cost is accumulated in process costing. We already have seen that in job costing costs are accumulated as per a particular job. And whereas in this case, the cost is accumulated over the processes and at the end of the process, the cost is accumulated. We'll also see the concept of equivalent production. So in process costing, a pictorial presentation, we can see that the input is introduced in process A and we have direct material and overheads and labor. Then the output of process A is transferred to process B. And once again, there may be material being introduced here, labor being introduced here, and some overheads are, can also be incurred here. And this output of this process may be partly transferred to process B and partly may stay here. Similarly, the output of process B will become the finished goods. And if it is sold, then say cost of goods sold. So unlike the job costing, the cost goes on accumulating all through these processes and the final cost of goods will be visible at the end of the process B. Let us take an example. Suppose there are three processes A, B and C. The material introduced in A is 2000. Labor, these are all in rupees, 1500. Similarly in B, again material introduced 1000 and labor is 700. In the process C, no material introduced, but labor is 800. And there is a manufacturing overhead of 4,500, which have been incurred and common to ABC. So this manufacturing overhead can be allocated, a portion assigned um, over these processes by using different bases or drivers. For example, in this case, we assume that the absorption rate will be 150% of the labor cost. So let us see in process A, the account, the expenses will be 200,000 material, direct labor 1,500 and manufacturing overheads is 2,250 calculated by using 150% of the direct labor. And this output of process B, where uh, process A is transferred to the process B, is transferred to the process B. So in process B, the, the first input is the input from process A and then once again you incurred 1000 on material in this process and labor 700 in this process and overheads applied, overheads applied 150% of the labor then you have the total expenses, sum it up, you get the cost of goods which has manufactured up to this stage, which is transferred to process C. So in process C, in process C, in process C, once again, we'll see that the, the, the material from the process B are transferred and 
you don't incur any material cost here, no material further introduced, but the labor is spent on 800 rupees and once again the manufacturing over it is calculated as a percentage of the direct labor. And this is 10,800, 10,500 10, is the cost of the finished goods till now which will be transferred to the finished goods. So we can see that cost gets accumulated over these processes. And suppose the there is a closing stock of 4,500 and the balance will be transferred to the cost of goods sold or to the income statement. So therefore in this case each process, the output of each process becomes the input of the next process and the output of the last process becomes the finished goods. So in this example, we have assumed that there is no work in progress at the process level. We assumed our assumptions were, our assumptions were that no work in progress, no loss, okay, no loss at any stage, no profits between the, well, transferring the goods from one process to the another process. So with an assumption that there is no work in progress, no loss and no profits between the departments or the processes, the process accounts look like this. Now let us see, in case of the presence of the um, work in progress, that means partly finished goods at that particular process. Whenever there will be work in progress, one needs to calculate equivalent units or equivalent production before we assign the cost and the equivalent units are the derived amount of output units that takes the quantity of each input in completed units completed. In other words, for each component of the cost we find the equivalent units because it's possible that in a particular process you might have spent whatever required to be spent on material but with respect to labor and overheads you might have spent only 50 percent with respect to overheads you might have spent only 30 percent so therefore it is not advisable to allocate the cost uniformly across the work in progress and the finished goods because finished goods are 100 percent complete in every respect. So equivalent unit therefore is a notional unit which is calculated as the actual output may be finished or work in progress into the degree of completion and this is notional. But equivalent units are used to calculate, assign the cost and this can be there may be opening work in progress or there may be closing work in progress or there may be opening and closing work in progress. Whenever there is work in progress, we have to, we will calculate the process cost by first finding the equivalent production. Then we determine the cost, allocate, then we assign the cost to finished goods work in progress then of course we'll do the process costing so there are certain steps these steps are not mandatory but this is to facilitate the process of uh, determining the cost at the end of a particular process so let us take an example so in this case we are assuming that there is only closing work in progress but before we use the concept of work in progress, equivalent output, let us calculate without using the work in progress. 
uh, or without using the concept of equivalent production so that we can see the difference in the cost determination. So if it is the direct material, okay, if you see the information given, so the units introduced in the process 3500, units complete 3000, and work in progress 500. That means here also we are assuming no loss. And this work in progress is not complete in every respect. With respect to material, complete 100%. With respect to labor, complete 60%. With respect to overhead, complete 40%. And the expenses incurred or the costs incurred during the period is material, labor, overheads. And there is there is no opening work in progress is our assumption, no loss. So the cost can be, suppose we don't use the concept of equivalent productions. So the total cost is just summation of all these expenses. Divide this by the production plus WIP, uniformly charged, and then find the cost of finished goods and the cost of work in progress. So in this case, if that, in, with this process, our cost of finished goods is 40,543 and the cost of work in progress is 67,657. So the cost of uh, um, per unit is 13.5. But however, as we already discussed, in order to allocate it properly, we have to use the concept of equivalent output. So the physical units, this statement will help us in finding the equivalent output. First understand, see the format. So there is a physical units column and there is an equivalent unit column for every element of cost, material, labor and overheads. So the input introduced is 3500, okay, and the output is 3000 and the finish and work in progress is 500 and output is 100% complete, the DOC is a degree of completion. So output is equal to, so the actual input, actual quantity into degree of completion will give me the equivalent output. So equivalent output is or equivalent unit is for the output only and equivalent units are in, in units only not in value. So degree of completion into output will give us the equivalent production because it's 100% complete the actual is equal to EU. But where in case of work in progress this 500 so 100% complete with respect to the material. So equivalent output with respect to material is 500. However, 60% complete with respect to labor. So it is 500 units is equivalent to 300 with respect to the labor. And equivalent output is 40% of the actual, that is 200. So 3,500 3,500, 3,300 and 3,200 are the equivalent units with respect to the actual units of 3,500 with for each individual element of cost. So this is the process of determining the equivalent production. Now what will we do with this equivalent output? We try to will try to find the cost per unit. So the cost per unit is equal to. We know that material money spent on is twenty four thousand, labor thirteen thousand two hundred, and manufacturing overhead nine thousand six hundred. And this costs are not assigned uniformly over three thousand five hundred, but they use we use the equivalent units to find the cost per unit. So equivalent unit with respect to material, equal units with respect to labor, 
and equal in unit with respect to the overheads are used to find the per unit per unit cost to find the per unit cost so per unit cost is 14 not 13.5 as determined previously now with this statement we'll now find assign this cost over the finished goods and the work in progress so the finished goods cost is complete in every respect so therefore 3000 multiplied by 14 will give me the cost of finished goods but with respect to material will find the cost of each component based on the equivalent out units and determine so therefore we have the cost of finished goods is 42,000 and the cost of cost of work in progress is 5,003. Now we'll use this information to prepare our um, process cost with EU. What's the difference? You can see the difference that the cost input cost is same 47, 47,300. However, the material, the finished goods is now 42,000 and 5,300 for work in progress respectively. So the total cost is 47,300, but the way we allocated, assigned, absorbed over this process A units is the finished goods is 42,000, not 40,543. If we'll not use the concept of EU, then we may be under costing the finished goods. And if at this stage, if we are going to transfer to someone else, to another process or sell, then you are not recovering the full cost. It's a wrong costing. This cost is not correct because you have not found the equivalent units. So with equivalent units, and without the opening work in progress and no loss our assumptions continue here like this our assumptions we say once again in this case our assumptions where uh, there is work in progress okay but no loss and no profits in between the processes so we can see the cost determined determined by using equivalent production concept is different than the cost determined without equivalent production. So which is more accurate? In principle, this is able to reflect the business reality. So therefore, this is more accurate than this. So in the next session, we'll see if there will be an opening work in progress also. Thank you very much.